Great to have you back and uh, thanks for sticking with us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We, of course, will be now moving into a discussion with regards to the national identity number. It's created a major conversation across the country in the last few weeks. Uh, news uh, from yesterday say that 47.8 million people have now uh, registered for the national identity numbers. And so we're going to be having a quick conversation, reviewing the whole process and the significance of the national identity number. What are the possibilities really of achieving the targets that have been set by the 9th of February? Um, but before we get into that conversation and introduce our guests, we'll please, of course, uh, watch this uh, quick report. Um, on the national identity number. Nigerians seen here at the Koyi Registration Center believe the deadline date is not feasible considering Nigerians' population. They must extend it. What is the population of Nigeria? How many people have been captured? Over a million people have not been captured. So they will tell the million people that they will not use their phone again. At the National Identification Management Commission headquarters in Lagos, there are different stages of queues. Gaining entrance through the main gate does not guarantee success as the queue continues inside. We've been here three days now. What if they ask me tomorrow not to resume at my place of work just because I want to get an NIN? That our government can come up with something meaningful. It's frustrating. Nursing mothers are not exempted from the hustle for the registration. This thing is not encouraging. I'm fed up of all oh year. Or if it's not compulsory, I don't need to bring my baby down here. And here are some of their suggestions and pleas to the government to ease the process. Since we have this COVID-19 on ground, the federal government, all the names in the people in charge, should create more centers, enable centers to enable people register at ease. Just like uh, Pennywise found foolish, NIH should not come by this time. Because uh, I won't lie to you, the number will continue to jerry up. It's not all about, about prayer. Government can do better than this. They can check it online. People can sit down in their houses. We're talking about uh, shelter in place, stay at home. And people, because they want to register for a number to get to sleep, they have to come here in the morning, go away in the evening, and queue up like this and expose to all the risks. We don't have, a, we don't have yet the vaccine in Nigeria. And trying to get update from the officials on deadline agitation, we were given the contact of the head corporate communication, NIMC, and this is what he said. We are just involved in the process, Ministry and Fish. But it's the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy and the Honorable Minister that issued the directive since last year, February. You understand? So he is the only person that can also talk on the deadline or extension or otherwise. The tension seen here might be understandable but it should also be a thing of worry seeing that the preventive directives of the pandemic have been violated. From NIMC office Ikeja, Jacinta Obuku reporting for PLOS TV Africa. And thanks to Jacinta Obuku for that report. We'll now get into a quick conversation with Mr. Gbolan Olojide once again. Good morning and thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, so let's, let's get you know, straight into it. 47.8 million people have so far been registered. Uh, sometime in December, I believe the number was at you know, 41 million that had officially been registered, 43 million um, across the country. Um, so let's start with you know, the difference now. We've been able to add a couple more people, four, five million, six million people um, in, <laughs> in that time. <laughs> Do you think so that's... we have like 150-something uh, to go, 150-something <laughs> million to go. And the deadline is... Uh, On the 9th of February. Now. Um, it, 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 it's one of our knee-jerk reactions, um, so it, it probably wasn't properly thought through. So there were certain issues from the security perspective, and we just wanted to leverage on that, quickly do this thing. Of course, there are several other uses for having an NIL. So from an objective perspective, why do we want to do this? It's a fantastic idea. We don't have uh, an identity today that is um, robust, that captures the entire Nigeria. We don't have anything like that. So in the days of palliative, when people were saying, use BVN, you ask yourself, how many BVNs do we have in the 200 million uh, country people? It's the same thing with all other forms of identification that we have. So getting all Nigerians, or 99% of Nigerians to be on NIN is a fantastic idea. 
It will help us from a data perspective and, and several other parts. So let, let, let me give you an instance. Um, when I did graduate studies in the US, my school identity card, the school ID, I can, if I put it on a scanner at the airport, he has all my data. I will bring up my name, will bring everything. That's the, that is a school identity card. Because all these means of identification are synced. synchronized. Yes. Yes. They're all together. And they are unique. In Nigeria, identities are not unique. I may be Adebayo Ojo here. I may be Adekunle Ojo in another identity card. I may have different ages. It's a whole lot of mess. So from an objective perspective, fantastic. Can I kindly ask, where does this issue start? Does it start with our birth registration? Because we know lots of people do not even get registered. And that's even because of one fundamental issue that how many people really have access to proper health care in the first place? So this issue does not seem deeper than we're looking at it. It is deeper. But you see, uh, the, the beauty of the current identity systems is that it helps you capture unique. So the one that you have captured will be unique because it has biometric information. You know, so that, that in itself is a plus. But like you said, it runs much deeper uh, in the villages. We are talking of all this Kenya. We are showing Lagos and Abuja and Lokoja. I don't know what is happening in Yusfari. Yes. There are people that are living there and they have to be captured. Do they have to travel from those, their location to the nearest town or how are they meant to have an IN? Because we must ask those questions as well, especially now that we are talking about linking an IN to voters card and all those other things. How are we going to capture all those people? Are they going to be captured before February 9? If we take away all their phones in a time when people are living in serious insecurity uh, 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 regime and they cannot even make calls to say, okay, this is the nearest police uh, post or this is the nearest military base we are being attacked here. Are we also considering that? So it's, it's a messy thing. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. Uh, the the um, five million on the average that we've added now um, makes us as you know we can then assume that between now and the ninth of February we might add another three well, you know million ish about, you know yeah. about that. Um, so th is it expected that there would be another extension of the deadline because it doesn't seem possible in any way that you know hundred million people will get registered it's, in it's, the it's time not, that it's not going to happen. It's, it's definitely not going to happen, and I think. The, the, the leadership of this uh, uh, scheme, this, this, this project, need to sit down and talk seriously about it. And they need to also bring in other stakeholders. So this is uh, Minister of Communication and the, um, and, the other, and the other guy, the Dan Bataga NCC. They can come down and bring, number one, the Minister of Health, because they have a stake in this. On one side, healthcare people are saying, don't go and start gathering. While Minister of Communication is saying, go and get your NIN. So to get the NIN, people are gathering. That's a, that's a critical stakeholder who need to be there. There is the security uh, uh, people also who are saying, people were making calls, we don't know who they are. People are demanding ransom in, 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 the, in the case of uh, kidnaps. We can't track them down because we don't have unique identities in Nigeria. We need to fix this problem. So bring the security people in, in also. Then bring the chief, the, the, the CNC himself in this because see, the way some of these things work in Nigeria is, once the, once the CNC says something, there are not many people who can look him in the face and say, uh, this is good, but it won't work the way you have said it. This is the way it will work. So once he says jump, they just say, how high? And they move on. And they put the pressure on, on, on you and I. That, that is the way that's it. So they need to bring him also. And maybe National Assembly. If you have a project, there are, there are three issues in project. You have the timing, the specification, and the cost of that project. That must be reviewed to ensure that you will achieve it. Part of the review we're talking about is what we saw with the 47 million that they're taking. They're telling you, okay, we have achieved this much. So let's do a review. Where are we going? Where are we right now? What will it take to get to where we are going? What do we need to tweak to be able to get there? And then have a proper plan to arrive at the destination. As it is today, if we just continue in this haphazard manner, we're not going to get anywhere. The, the ideas that you speak of, same thing with Mr. Demola Kimbolan, you know, hundreds, thousands of other people have shared similar ideas, but it doesn't seem like the presidency and, you know, the um, minister himself cares about these ideas because in the time that we've had this conversation, even right from this, the very first time that the NIN conversation started, 
um, not a lot of infrastructure has been put in place to ensure that these things are possible. Um, I think you mentioned about 70 centers in Lagos for the NIMC. Um, um, we've not seen an expansion of that. We've also not seen that some of these offices have maybe we moved to the local government areas, to the villages, to make it more accessible for people to get themselves registered and get their NINs. And so how it, do they expect that these things will happen without any expansion in the infrastructure to make it possible? That, that is part of what the kind of stakeholder review that I just talked about will help to achieve. Because when you bring all those stakeholders together, we cannot put all the problems on the table. As it is today, we are speaking from different sides of the matter. The security guy is concerned with, I want these numbers. I want, I want everybody to have a unique identity because I want to be able to track anybody down when the security issues happen. The NIN guys have been given a matching order and that is what they are focused on. So you have a singular objective, but you have different stakeholders, and they are pulling in different directions. Can we come together and get this thing addressed? That is what we need to do at this stage. Otherwise, if we, all, if we just leave it this way, we won't get anywhere. February 9 is on us now. Today is already 28th of January. So you think we can close 150 million gap in 20 days. between now and then? It's not going to happen. You cut people off. Let me also speak from the economic side of things. Yeah, we'll get there. You know, you have a, a recession. And one of the few uh, uh, sectors that grew during that recession was telecommunications. And here you are attacking that same section. Because that is what it seems if we put in uh, a, a non-functional, a non-effective approach to these otherwise laudable program. So when you call people off, so the data income that those guys will make, they will not make it. The SMS income, the call income, everything is taken away. The telecoms, um, according to research, contributed 17.36% uh, to Nigeria's GDP in the third quarter of 2020. Uh -huh. um, and that is what we risk losing, you know, if these things happen. We risk looking at a chunk of that. And it's not in our interest. This is a country that also want to get out of recession as soon as possible. And like I always say, getting out of recession is not by pronouncement. It's by the specific actions that the government take in that direction. This is a case of a specific action that we need to take. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing it right. Can we stay on this issue of infrastructure? We can all agree that the necessary infrastructure that needs to be put in place for everyone to be captured on this NIN database is not available at right. the moment. And we recall when NIMC and the federal government announced that they had set up special centers in you know, the embassies for foreign diplomats to register for the NIN. And you could feel the anger of people on social media saying, we Nigerians, we don't have this infrastructure, but foreign people, foreign diplomats, they've now been set, you know, given special attention. They will just go there, no queue, no crowd, no waiting. They just get their own express. How do we <laughs> contrapose this? Oh, well. They are privileged people. They are diplomat from time are treated specially. You don't even search their bags. You don't do this. You don't do that. So um, they will naturally get that kind of a treatment. You know. But that is not to say that we as Nigerians do not deserve better than what we're having. I saw a, a, a lady who was saying she has come to register. They've even stolen the phone. <laughs> see, everything the phone is they would use you see what, what I'm talking about. <laughs> so we deserve better. Let's be able to take a second look at this program and see what do we need to tweak to change and get to where we're going. It doesn't have to be this difficult to the, the um, something that we mentioned earlier, um, and that is the presence and the growing and expanding presence of tech in Nigeria. Um, there is a lot of you know young Nigerians that are getting very tech savvy and are doing phenomenally with information technology. Why aren't we consulting any of these people with being able to build a better system that can create you know synergy with you know all the databases that we should have? Why, why are we still stuck with the archaic system that, you know, the Nigerian government is, ex, you know, expressing with this? We may actually be doing what you're saying. Uh, but you see, some of these things are also not 
microwave like that. You, you don't snap your fingers and get them. When you're developing an app or a system, uh, after development, it goes through some debugging, some testing and all that. So it's not something that will arrive within the December, January that, that, that they're that they are talking about, which is part of the planning def uh, fault that we see. So if you're going to do that, it should be part of the thinking and the process that, oh, this system we have is not robust enough. When I did my NIN registration, I had to do it when I was on leave. And I went there. I got to that place as early as 6.30, and I was like number 50-something there. You know, that was even out of season. It wasn't around this time. You know, before the staff started coming, it was already like 9 o'clock. When they came for the first one hour, they said the system wasn't working. Like it has not come up. Everybody was just sitting there. So the system, the existing system, definitely was def deficient. In fact, I'm not so sure it might, it might not crash. Maybe they will have upgraded it anyway uh, with, the, with the flood of activities that it, it has been taking on in the past uh, few, few weeks. So there is definitely infrastructure deficiency. They may be addressing it. Like I said, they may be talking to tech people. The man himself, the Minister of Communication, is a techie person. You know, so he definitely knows who to speak with. You know, but then some of these things cannot be delivered microwave. Okay, so one, one key issue with this new registration and with several other issues like the COVID-19 pandemic is misinformation. Much of Nigeria was thrown into a frenzy yesterday because it was supposed to be the deadline for you, know, for you to link your, your name to your SIM card. And apparently, mischievous person set up a fake NIMC account. It was identical. It was just that it was in capital letters. If you don't look closely, you, 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 you will be fooled into thinking that it was the NIMC account. This one was just NIMC in capital letters underscore NG. And it said, by order of the federal government, today is given as the last day to register your NIMC or face the wrath of what comes next. You can see just how, <laughs> how tough this language was. This was retweeted so many times. So many Nigerians were scared. People were scared on Twitter until we saw that, you know, this was a fake account. In fact, we saw this on several newspapers that we know and trust, you know, until people started to say, this is, this is not the official handle. This is Dr. Isa Pantami now saying this is not the official handle, fraud stars and all of that. How would you say misinformation is affecting this whole process regarding yeah, well, the fake BVN, fake apps that were created and things like this? It's a major issue. Um, and that is because I don't think we are communicating officially um, enough. We're not, we're not doing that. And when there is a gap, misinformation will fill that gap. So there are mischief makers, there are speculators, there are people who just like to sit down and write all these images and put it out there and confuse a lot of people. So the only way to address that is to be proactive when it comes to communication regarding this matter. As at today, if you still call the average Nigerian on the road and you ask them about some of the particulars of this thing, they will give you different information. Mm. And I, I, I got a message from my service provider. Uh, I have two lines. And the message I got from this particular service provider was that the NIN I provided is not correct. The NIN information is okay. This is the same NIN that is on the other phone and it is correct. It is the same NIN that was pulled up when I was renewing my passport. It was the same NIN that I have on my NIN sleep. And then you, you said I should do a USSD thing to connect it and I sent it and then you came back to me to say the information is not correct. So, it is messy. Hmm. There is... Um not long ago, a couple of days ago or so, there was also a release, you know, saying that the NINs generated by BVN, you know, would not be, you know, accepted and people need to actually go to their offices and stand in, you know, queue. Um, does this imply in any way that the government doesn't even trust, you know, our BVNs and the biometrics that are uh, collated when we get our BVNs, when we get our international passports, when we get our driver's license and all of that? Um, does it mean that the government doesn't trust any of that information? I don't know where that could be coming from. I remember when I did my NIN, they called up my BVN. It was my BVN, they even used to call up uh, uh, some of this. So the, the information is there and they are linked. The BVN is linked to this NIN that we're mm -hmm. talking about. Uh, but maybe there are some slips here and there. For example, 
there might be error issues. Up till now, when you go, I've seen people who go to the bank and still have BVN error issues to deal with as we're speaking. The same thing with NIN, which is why you see people going to say, oh, this is not my name, or it has not been rightly spelled, or this is not my date of birth. So there will be issues about uh, data inconsistency. Um, but I would think that data inconsistency should be more resolved from the back end. And then only those ones that have issues, you can send messages to them to come and reconnect. But there, is bound, there are bound to be issues of data inconsistency. Okay, I want to ask you this question quickly. This, this has been a burning issue on the back of many Nigerians. Because the government is saying when everybody has their name, it's to ensure security, safety, you can track criminals and all of that. But we know what happens and how phones can be easily stolen. Mm -hmm. If your phones are stolen, or if someone's phone is stolen, right, and it is now in the possession of a criminal, and they go ahead to use it to perpetrate crime, and they track that name or the phone number, they track all the details to so the original owner, are we, are, we, are we likely to see here a case where people might now be arrested wrongfully because their name or their details was traced to, you know, the possession of criminals? If, um, if people steal your phone, this is also part of the awareness that we need to be able to create. You should be able to stop that, uh, that SIM card. Block the SIM card. To block the SIM card. And it shouldn't be something that will require you to go and queue up uh, for, for a couple of days for you to get that resolved. And Nigerians must be aware of that. So once at the awareness level, we're able to deal with that. Everybody whose phone gets stolen knows exactly that this is. It's like when somebody steals your ATM card, you call your bank and you block the card. Otherwise, your money might start flying if, if for whatever reason, they're able to hack your, your, your PIN. So I believe we can get past that with the right level of awareness. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes, that's it. Information, really, they need to start communicating more with the public, you know, through the media, social media, and all of that. So, communicating better. Yes, communicating better, better and more. So thank you very much, Mr. Bolahon Olojidi. It's, it's been pleasure. a pleasure it's having you on The Breakfast, you know, anytime. And uh, yes, it's a, it's a wrap on this segment. We're now going to turn to affairs and relations between the U.S. and Nigeria, talking about the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden in a couple of hours. Do stay with us.